Today I want to share with you some very clever ways for how to create meals in bags. And this talk is going to go way beyond just meals in bags, so let's get started. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary from marysnest.com and author of the Modern Pioneer Cookbook. And welcome to my kitchen. If at any time you want to jump ahead in this video, be sure to check the description below where I'll have detailed timestamps. Plus, I'll also have a link there that'll take you to the blog post over on my website that'll correspond with this video, and that'll also be where you can download the printables that I'm going to talk about, and they're totally free, no email required. As traditional foods cooks, we often have very well-stocked pantries. But sometimes we'll look into our pantry and think, oh my goodness, what should I be making for a meal? Well, having some meals in bags on hand can make this very easy. But you really want to take things one step further past just creating meals in bags that you put in your working pantry. You also want to create meals that are very easy to access from your refrigerator or from your freezer, but that are already pulled together for you to make the job of meal preparation very easy and simple. The first thing I want to do is go over the types of ingredients that are best to keep on hand to create meals in bags. Then I actually want to show you how to put those ingredients together to create meals in bags. And now I'm using the term meals in bags loosely because they can also be ingredients where you're creating meals where you corral everything together and put it in your refrigerator or corral everything and together and put it in your freezer. And so when you're ready to cook, you can just pull something out of one of those three places and be good to go. Then in addition to talking about the ingredients that we're going to want to have on hand and how to put those ingredients together in pairings that can create a nice meal, I also want to talk about what I like to call partial meals in bags. These are meals that you may have some of the ingredients together in one place, in one bag, that are shelf stable, and maybe you have other ingredients together in your refrigerator or your freezer that also create a partial meal in a bag, so to speak. Then when you pull those together, you create your full meals in a bag, or full meal in a bag. <laughs> now after we work our way through this video, be sure to check that link in the description below that'll take you over to my website because I'm going to have a nice collection of recipes for you that are going to help you put together meals in bags and then use those meals in bags to create meals. And all those recipes are free and you can download them and the reason that you'll want to download them is print them out because we're going to talk about how we want to keep those recipes with all of the supplies that we keep together to create our meal in a bag. Alrighty, now let's get started going over the ingredients that are best to have on hand to create a meal in a bag. And I'll bet a lot of these are already in your pantry. So before you rush out to the store, look at everything you have in your pantry and think of how you can assemble these things all together to create a meal in a bag. And we're also going to talk about a variety of ways, the different types of supplies we can use to package our meals in bags, and also how to label everything in a clever way that's easy to reuse, but at the same time lets us know what we've got in the bag and what it can be used to make. Let's start with proteins. Having canned chicken and canned tuna on hand are perfect for adding to a meal in a bag. These are non-perishable and they have a long shelf life. Now what I'm sharing with you today are a lot of products that you can purchase at your local grocery store. However, depending where you are on your traditional foods journey, you may have a lot of home preserved goods. You may have home canned goods, you may have dried foods, you may have a whole variety of home preserved foods. If you are a home canner and you have canned chicken or canned beef, whatever the case may be, those are perfect for meals in a bag. The type of meal in a bag that you're going to put in your pantry, your working pantry, that is non-perishable. 
that the foods that are going into this meal in a bag are non-perishable. So even though we have store-bought foods here, definitely keep your home canned foods in mind as well. The next ingredient to have on hand to create these meals in bags is some type of canned beans. They can be store-bought canned beans or they can be home canned beans. And you wanna have a wide selection. Next, you wanna make sure that you have a good selection of canned vegetables. These come in very handy and they're extremely versatile, whether you're trying to make a soup very quickly or maybe a casserole very quickly. Being able to just open some cans and dump everything in, mix it up, pop it in the oven, or just warm it on the stove. If you've got this in your meal in a bag, you're all set. One of the best ingredients that you can have in your pantry for any type of meal prep, including making meals in bags, are tomato products. Now I've got store-bought products here, but your home canned products are also perfect for creating meals in bags. I've also got dried tomatoes here, and if you have your own oven dried tomatoes, they're perfect too. Now I just wanna take a minute to go over some of the different types of tomato products I have here. Uh, what I've got, as I mentioned, the dried tomatoes. These are terrific uh, for meals in bags, as well as just having in your pantry for creating an easy meal. I've also got the sun-dried tomatoes packed in olive oil. The, these are very helpful. I've got two varieties here. You know, as I've shared with you, I'm not brand loyal. I usually just buy whatever I can find on sale. I also have a video that I'll link to where I show you how to make your own oven dried tomatoes. It's very easy to do. And if you get a good buy on tomatoes at the grocery store or the farmer's market, or you get a nice bumper crop in your kitchen garden, you're all set. Here I've got some pizza sauce. And then over here I've got the, it, it's the store brand, but you may know the name brand as Rotel. It's usually a mixture of tomatoes and chilies. That's an excellent product to keep on hand. Here I've got a whole variety of diced tomatoes. They come in all kinds of flavors these days. I've got fire roasted, Italian style, chipotle, one of my favorite, I love chipotle. And here I've just got the plain diced tomatoes. These are very versatile and terrific for creating meals in bags as well as just creating any type of meal quickly. Then what I've got here is some picante. You can have this or you can have a chunky salsa. It makes very quick work of making a tortilla soup. Uh, yes, you can certainly use Rotel, uh, but I often like using picante or a, chunk, uh, a chunky uh, salsa. I, I love that. And it's got your onions, your peppers, your tomatoes, and it can save you a lot of time uh, when you want to just, when you're tired and you just want to open some bottles and jars, cans, whatever the case may be and heat up a soup real quickly. And I'll definitely be sure to share that recipe with you as one of the ones to download. And as we'll talk about in a minute, how to make sure that that recipe is a printed copy of that recipe is always with your meals in bags. And the other thing I want to mention that I also have a video where I show you how to make a tortilla soup and I love it because it's literally ready in 10 minutes and you're just opening jars as I mentioned in cans and it's very tasty and easy to do. Having canned fruit, whether store-bought or home canned and dried fruit, again, whether store-bought or home dried are wonderful for use in creating meals in bags. These are, can be so versatile. You can make different types of casseroles with canned fruit, and with dried fruit, you can often add it. If you're making couscous or rice, you can get very creative. You also wanna make sure that you have some jams on hand. And again, homemade, I have lots of recipes for you where I've showed you how to make homemade jams and how to home can them, or simply store-bought jams. What I've got here is orange marmalade. It's one of my favorite, and it's a great ingredient for making a sweet and sour chicken casserole. And that's the type of casserole that can be made with completely all non-perishable ingredients. So it's one of those perfect, easy recipes for creating a meal in a bag. 
Now what I've got here is evaporated milk. I like to keep this in my pantry, not just for emergencies, but for also adding to making a meal in a bag. And the reason is, if you've ever seen recipes for various meals in bags, they often call for some sort of condensed soup. And I really like to stay away from those. They're often laden uh, with a variety of processed ingredients. And as traditional foods cooks, we really want to limit that type of thing. Now, you can make your own dry version of a soup mix that can then be used to go on to be used in casseroles and soups, gravies, a whole host of things. And I have a recipe, or I have a video with a recipe where I show you how to make that homemade, which is again something that's wonderful uh, to go ahead and add to a meal in a bag, and I'll be sure to link to that. But if, depending where you are in your journey, and maybe your traditional foods journey, and maybe you've not uh, started making those type of ingredients, having evaporated milk can be very handy. Because this can be used when making a casserole that would otherwise re require you to use some sort of condensed soup. This evaporated milk and a few other dry shelf stable ingredients and you're all set for making a wonderful casserole. I want to take a minute to talk about breadcrumbs. Now these are just my homemade breadcrumbs. They're an Italian variety where I've added some oregano and basil and things like that. It's a wonderful way to use up stale bread and not waste anything. But having homemade breadcrumbs, or even breadcrumbs that you buy at the store, in your pantry are going to be a very useful ingredient when putting together a meal in a bag, especially one that involves creating a casserole that maybe you want to have a breadcrumb topping on. Now you might be saying, oh Mary, well that's great, but I don't want to, I'm not going to need a whole box, or in the case of homemade ones, a whole jar of breadcrumbs, so what should I be doing when I go to add this to my bag? And that is a great question. We're going to talk about a lot about this in detail uh, in, a, in a few minutes, but what I want to mention is that yes, many of us traditional foods cooks buy things in bulk, we make things in bulk, so on and so forth. But you're going to be portioning out everything that you need and putting it into the bag. That's just to make your life easy. So if the recipe calls for just a quarter cup or a half a cup, you're just going to get a container of something like this. It's a little out of reach. I'm going to bring it over here. Something like this or glass, whatever you have, and you're going to portion out how much you need, and then you can just go ahead and add this to your bag. Now what I'm talking about is a way to make things really convenient. But if for some reason you don't want to portion something out and you find it easy just to take your jar, your big jar or big box of breadcrumbs out of your pantry, you can do that too. That's the beauty of making meals in bags. It's up to you how you want to package everything. You can either measure everything out and put it in different little containers and put it into your bag, including even your salt and pepper if you want. I don't go that far. I usually just add the salt and pepper when I'm cooking. But you can make this as simple and foolproof as possible so that in essence anyone could take that meal in a bag out of your working pantry. That's usually what I refer to as our main pantry in our kitchen that we access on a regular basis. Uh, that has all of our non-perishable foods in it. But the bottom line is somebody could take that bag. This is very nice if for any reason you're under the weather and can't do the cooking. Someone can take that bag out of your pantry. They'll have the recipe. They'll have everything in that bag that they need to create that recipe. And it's incredibly convenient. It's also really helpful if you're tired. If you get home from work and maybe it's six o'clock and you really need to get dinner on the table quickly and you don't want to think about having to measure anything. You want to just mix a lot of ingredients together and be able to create a, a tasty as well as a nutritious meal. Having everything already pre-measured is very convenient.
Now, speaking of portioning things out, I want to take a minute to talk about herbs and spices. What I've got here is ground coriander, and over here I've got ground cumin. These are both ingredients that are going to go into one of my meals in a bag. But I'm not going to put this whole thing in there, and I don't necessarily want to be fishing around for it, as I mentioned before, worrying about measuring things out when I'm ready to make that meal. So again, talking about portioning things out, if the recipe calls for a teaspoon or a tablespoon, whatever the case may be, and all of the herbs and spices can be mixed together because they're all going in together, I'll just get a little jar like this and I'll measure out how much I need and then I'll just go ahead and put that into my bag. This is just a little glass jar. It's just a little recycled glass jar that I have. You use a plastic jar. You can use a little plastic bag. Whatever you have on hand, whatever makes life easy for you. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you know I love recycled jars, recycled lots of things. And if you've seen my video called Kitchen Treasures from the Garbage or my follow-up video, Garden Treasures from the Garbage, you know that I love to recycle and repurpose things that I can use in my kitchen and in my garden. And bottles and jars are one of those. Next to the tomatoes that I mentioned earlier, one of the next best things that you can have in your pantry ready to use to prepare a meal in a bag is broth. You can have chicken broth, you can have vegetable broth, and what I've got here is home canned bison broth. Any kind of broth you have on hand is going to be wonderful when trying to make a meal in a bag or even any quick meal. Now the reason I'm focused on broth as opposed to stock and bone broth, and if you ever want to know the difference between the three, I have a video where I go over all of that in great detail. And whenever I mention videos that I've made before, I'll be sure to put links to those in the description underneath this video. But the reason that I recommend broth is because broth is not gelatinous. It, not necessarily. It generally is not a gelatinous liquid. And what does that mean? What it means is that when it's cool, it doesn't look like jello. It's more liquid in nature. And it's high in protein and minerals, which is excellent. But it's not gelatinous. So I'm comfortable having it in packaging like this or pressure canning it because I'm not worried about the gelatin being broken, as we say, meaning damaged. We work hard when we make bone broth or stock, and I have a lot of videos. I have a big playlist on how to make a whole variety of bone broths as well as stocks and broths, and I'll be sure to link to all of those. But the bottom line is that we work very hard to create a high quality bone broth that's very gelatinous or a somewhat gelatinous stock. And so we don't want to ruin that. And when you pressure can a stock or a bone broth, the high temperature required to pressure can can damage the gelatin. The same is true of ones that are commercially packaged or canned under high pressure, then damaging the gelatin. So there's no sense paying good money for store-bought stock or bone broth because in essence, unless you know for a fact that it's coming from a refrigerated section and has not been put under pressure and is still gelatinous, there's no point in it. The, the, the money, you're, you're throwing good money after bad, as they say. So better to buy broth, which is a liquid product, yet high in protein and very nutritious and perfect when you want to make a quick meal. Having a variety of flours and flour mixes on hand are going to be very helpful to, in the case of flour like this, all-purpose flour, portioning out into a container and adding this to your meal in a bag if the recipe calls for flour. This way, again, as we talked about earlier, everything's measured out and ready for you. Often when you're making a casserole or some type of sauce or gravy, the recipe is probably going to call for flour. And you can't go wrong with all-purpose flour. This is very shelf-stable. 
all the bran and the germ has been sifted out of it, so it's going to have an excellent shelf life. So being able to repackage this into something smaller, appropriate to the recipe, popping it into your bag, and you're all set. Now, these type of various flour mixes can come in very handy too. All I recommend is that as traditional foods cooks, we want to look for those that are more natural as opposed to those that have more chemicals and more processed ingredients. If you're thinking, you know, Bisquick or something like that, I would prefer that you make that homemade. And I have a recipe with a video where I show you how to do that. And you keep it very natural and very shelf stable, and that can be perfect. Also, if you find things like this in your store, this is a pizza dough, and it has everything in it that you need to put together a pizza in terms of the crust. So it's made with the double O flour, zero, zero. That uh, is very helpful uh, when making, being very successful in making a very authentic and traditional pizza crust and very easy. And it's got everything else in here. It even has a little bit of a sourdough starter and some salt, but overall it's relatively natural. So this can be great to put into your meal in a bag along with your pizza sauce and along with some other ingredients we're gonna talk about in a minute. Now there are a lot of products on the market that you can buy like dried cheeses and even dried and powdered butter and so on and so forth. But you want to keep in mind that those things sometimes require being special ordered or might be quite costly. So more of what you can find at your grocery store that lean a little more natural, uh, not as perfect as we may like as traditional foods cooks, but lean a little more natural and maybe a little easier on the pocketbook are always a good idea. Now, if you have a recipe that calls for butter, but you want to get everything portioned out and you want to get it into your meal in a bag, you can certainly use ghee. Ghee is clarified butter that usually is made in a way that's a little different than just a simple plain clarified butter, although you can use that as well. Uh, but people tend to like ghee because the milk solids are allowed to toast a little bit in it and then you've got this wonderful product whether it's clarified butter or ghee, where the milk solids have been removed and all you're left with, in essence, is like a butter oil. And it has a very long shelf life. And so you can put a little bit of clarified butter or a little bit of ghee into, again, some sort of container, and you can go ahead and put that in your meal in a bag. And along the lines of perishable products, like replacing butter by using something like ghee or clarified butter where the milk solids have been removed and so you've got something that's more shelf stable. I also like to look for products like this Parmesan cheese and this is a nice one. It has basil and oregano and I was very happy to find this at my grocery store because when you read the ingredients, it's very natural. It's basically the Parmesan cheese with a variety of herbs and some salt added. And so when we were talking earlier about using the pizza mix, and then we had the pizza sauce that we uh, showed when we went over the tomato products, you could also put something like this in your bag and although this doesn't have the longest shelf life of most products, it is shelf stable. It's the laughing cow cheese. And I know this is a little more processed than what generally traditional food cooks tend to like. However, it's not as bad as a lot of other products that I've come across. And I do like to keep this on hand. And it's wonderful if you've seen my videos where I've talked about, you know, the emergency pantry, having two weeks of food on hand uh, in the event that you're without power and without clean running water, but you're stuck at home. You're not, you've not been evacuated. It's often related to bad weather situations. And we've certainly gone through that with various ice storms here in Texas. Having these products like Laughing Cow Cheese and like peanut butter and saltine crackers, and I go way beyond that in that video, but these type of things can come in handy. 
And if you're trying to put a pizza together at the last minute and you just want to have a, a meal in a bag where you can pull out, make the dough, get your sauce on, maybe sprinkle it with some Parmesan cheese here, and then maybe grate some of this, it melts just fine. You can have something that's actually very tasty and I think most people will enjoy. Now, if there are things I haven't covered when we've talked about these different shelf-stable products for putting in a meal in a bag, be sure to let me know in the comments below what you like to use. I always enjoy learning from others and we all learn from each other in the comments. Ingredients that are great for adding when making a meal in a bag are things like rice and pasta. We've got couscous here. It's also a form of pasta. You could have uh, also any of the different grains that you like that are very popular today, like quinoa, anything like that that's shelf stable. And then also having some egg noodles on hand are wonderful uh, for adding to a meal in a bag that where you may be making a casserole, like a tuna noodle casserole or a chicken noodle casserole. You can use one of your canned uh, tunas or your canned chicken, your condensed milk, some of your breadcrumbs, maybe a can of your vegetables uh, where you've got peas and carrots. There are so many options and that's the beauty of creating these meals uh, in bags is that once you start doing this, you become very creative and you think of a lot of ideas of what you would like to put in your particular meal in a bag. You can think about what you like eating, what, you, what your family enjoys eating, and how in the past maybe those were created with a variety of ingredients that involved various preparation, refrigeration, so on and so forth. Now you can create them in a bag for when you're short on time or you're in a hurry or whatever the case may be, you can have a meal that's similar to maybe one of your more, for lack of a better word, like formally made meals uh, that involve you know, more chopping and preparation and so on and so forth. This is sort of your quick and easy version of it, but hopefully one that's still very tasty. And then again, as we've talked about previously, in terms of portioning things out, you can just have some larger jars or plastic bags, plastic containers, canning jars, whatever you have, and you can portion out how much rice your recipe calls for, or different types of pasta that you may be using, or portioning out your couscous or your quinoa, whatever the case may be, just portion it out, plop it down into your bag. Now we went over a lot of the non-perishable ingredients that are very useful for having on hand for when we want to make meals in bags. Now I want to talk about some of the supplies that can come in very handy as to what we're going to be putting all these non-perishable foods into. Then I also want to go one step further and talk about some different options for how we may want to store food in the refrigerator or in the freezer that may correspond with a partial meal in the bag that you've got part of the ingredients here and then part of the ingredients in the fridge or the freezer that are ready to be combined. Often when you think of a meal that's been prepared and is in the freezer, it's usually thought of as a freezer meal and it's usually something like a casserole or maybe stuffed shells. I always like making that. I have a recipe and a video for you on how to do that. But usually those are made in advance, they're wrapped well in their casserole dish, and they're frozen as is. And when you're ready to make that, you simply take it out of your freezer. Sometimes it may require defrosting, other times it can go right into the oven. And technically, not a meal in a bag, thought of more often as a freezer meal, it's very easy to have ready in no time at all. But what about ingredients that you may want to have in your freezer that are ready to be turned into a meal? Having some type of freezer-proof container like this can be very helpful. 
often in my situation, I find that what I'm putting in my freezer is usually a partial, in essence, meal in a bag. It's generally ingredients, maybe like ground beef and some other ingredients that I want to use to supplement various non-perishable ingredients that I have in a bag. But there may be times when you've got uh, some frozen ground beef, some frozen broth, and maybe some frozen vegetables. And you know that there's something that you like to make with all of those, maybe like a ground beef soup, and then maybe topped with some of your homemade croutons. I've shared that with you uh, in the past here on the channel. You can put everything into your container, and then when you're ready to make it, you know, you're going to label it, and you're going to have the recipe there, usually in some sort of plastic bag to keep it dry, and then you're all set. The same is true for your refrigerator. Now granted, things in the refrigerator don't have the same lifespan of non-perishable ingredients in your working pantry that have been created and put into a meal in a bag or something that's been created and put into your freezer. It can still be very helpful to corral everything into some type of container based on what maybe you want to make for dinner that night. Things that may need it to have been defrosted and simply things that you want to have together that can then, yes, also be as a supplement to your non-perishable ingredients or everything you need right in a container like this that you can bring out onto your counter and in itself will make a complete meal. Something like this is very useful, especially if you've got some different pickled or fermented type ingredients that need to be refrigerator, refrigerated, things that have not been home canned. Or say you're doing a whole chicken with some other ingredients, having some sort of large shallow container like this that can hold your chicken along with various other ingredients that maybe you have in a Ziploc bag just in case the chicken leaks. <laughs> That's why these are made, I think. They come in very handy to protect our refrigerators. But you can take this out and you can get your chicken right into your oven along with whatever other ingredients you have there. And everything is sort of thought out for you in advance. You really don't have to think a lot about it. But what I want to focus on now is sharing with you how I put together a meal in a bag and how I have the recipe on it, how I protect the recipe, and how I do this in a process that allows me to reuse everything once, that, once the ingredients in that bag have been used up. The first thing that I like to do is look at the recipes in which I'm going to be using to make various meals in bags. And then I find bags that will fit those ingredients. Sometimes what I'm making is just a very small little meal. And so a little brown paper bag like this works great. Other times I'll need something larger. And these are just bags that I collect from time to time at various stores where I shop. Even if the bags have things written on them, as often grocery store bags do, I don't worry about it. It doesn't matter to me. But whenever I can find ones that are very plain like this in my various shopping travels, I like to hold on to them. And then this is definitely going to be something that's going to be large enough to hold enough ingredients to feed a crowd. And then just like my brown paper bags, I also will keep large plastic bags on hand for corralling ingredients all together. Both work great. You may like plastic bags because they're very, it's very easy to see what's inside. And I certainly understand that, but I'm going to show you what I do so that I know exactly what's in every bag that I pack. Now, earlier I mentioned a wonderful meal in a bag to make is chicken tortilla soup. It's tasty, everybody loves it, and it can be considered a 100% complete meal in itself. Or you can certainly look at it as a partial meal and add in some ingredients from your refrigerator, such as grated cheese 
and maybe a dollop of sour cream. But if you don't have that, or you don't want to deal with it, you don't, either, you don't have it on hand, or you just don't want to get anything out of your refrigerator, this soup can stand on its own. Then what I like to do is get these inexpensive page protectors. They're the type that are used. This one's got a lot of oomph to it. This is a little, a little looser type consistency. Uh, but these are very inexpensive. These are a little more costly, but it really doesn't matter what you use because you're just going to be clipping this as I'll show you to the bag. But the beauty of using these is that you can take your recipe, which I have printed out, and I'll have lots of these for you over on my website as I shared, and you can print them out to your heart's content. No email or anything like that required. I make it very easy for you, and I'll have a lot for you to choose from. Then let's take this bag, because often what I'm making for meals in a bag are something that my husband and I are going to enjoy. So this size bag is perfect for the amount of food that I would need to put in here for two. Even actually, I have found that th even for three or four will work just fine. Then, now, let me get this so I can show you. I've got the re recipe in my page protector, and then I go ahead and clip this right to my bag, and I just use a little binder clip. Now, after everything in this bag is used up, I'll turn this around in a minute. After everything in this bag is used up, I still have this nice clean recipe that's been protected by the page protector. And so I will just keep this bag as is intact, ready to be filled again with these ingredients, or I can just transfer this to a different bag and put something else on here, uh, whatever the case may be. But it, I can just fold it up like this, and I can store, I can refill it right at the moment that I've emptied it if I want and I have those ingredients on hand, or I can just fold it like this and store it away in a drawer or in a plastic container, what's ever easiest for me, whatever I have the most available room for. But these stores, you see, even a whole bunch once emptied, even with the page protector and the binder clip, they don't take up a lot of space. And if I do store this away, then when I'm thinking of making the chicken tortilla soup or buying the ingredients or making home canning them or whatever the case may be, I simply look through my bags and I say, oh yeah, that recipe was good. Oh yeah, that one was good, <laughs> whatever. And then I pull it out and I just open it up and I pack everything in there that I need. I really like using these brown paper bags, or, although as I said, you can definitely use plastic bags as well. These are just nice because they stand upright and I can just put a couple of them into my working pantry and it's very easy to grab and make a meal from. I find the plastic bags a little more challenging, but I think that if you get a bin, <laughs> like what we were talking about for the refrigerator, and you take your bin and you put your plastic bags, large or small, depending on how many ingredients you need, in the bin and then put this bin into your working pantry, this can be very accessible and easy to deal with. But I really like the brown paper bags, and yes, they may take up a lot of room in your working pantry, so it's not like you're putting a whole bunch in there. I may just have two or three, and that's sufficient, because most of the time, I'm gonna be making something that requires a little more prep, that is a little more homemade. That's, I think, what most of us who are traditional foods cooks do. But we want to make sure we have at least two or three meals in bags. <laughs> I always have to remember to say that correctly, whether I'm doing plural or sing singular. <laughs> but you always want to have a couple of these on hand for what we talked about before, where we may be tired, we may be busy, we may be in a rush. There's so many reasons sometimes why it can be difficult to get a meal on the table quickly, and one that's relatively healthy. It may not be as perfect as our usual homemade meals, 
but it's still relatively healthy and quick and easy. And that keeps us out of the fast food lines or whatever the case may be. So you have two or three of these. I can usually put these just on the lower level of my pantry and they're there and they're ready to grab. Now how I arrange these recipes is I simply list the ingredients that are in the bag. So the ingredients that I'll be adding to this bag to make the soup are two cans of chicken, one can dark red kidney beans, one can black beans, one can corn, and these can be store-bought or ones that you've home canned, one jar chunky salsa, mild or medium, I find that works best, but if you like hot, certainly you can go with that one teaspoon ground cumin, and one teaspoon ground coriander. And I'll portion both of those out into a small container. And then eight cups of chicken broth. It can be your home canned, or it can be what I showed you earlier in those various boxes that are sold at your local grocery store. Then, if the recipe calls for it, I may have some information on the recipe that'll talk about additional ingredients that you can add that you may have on hand. And usually always in that, under that category, I have salt and pepper, because I tend to not put those into my meal in a bag. I tend to just have those on my counter and uh, use them accordingly, uh, usually to taste. <laughs> and then I also have listed here one bag tortilla chips. We always have those on hand, they're always in our pantry, uh, so I don't have to worry. I know I'm gonna have those for any recipe I may be making that call for tortilla chips. If tortilla chips are not something that you keep on hand a lot, you can buy a small bag and pop it in here, or you can buy a bag that you use for various recipes or snacks or whatever the case may be, and just portion out an, a small amount to then add to your meal in a bag. They are going to be crushed so you don't have to worry about trying to protect them. And then the next section I usually have are optional ingredients from the refrigerator if desired. And the only reason that I would have ingredients from the refrigerator here listed as actual ingredients is if this was just a partial meal in a bag. But this is a full meal, standalone meal in a bag. So I have optional ingredients from the refrigerator if desired. And there I've listed grated cheese and sour cream. They certainly add a nice touch to the soup, but you don't need them if you don't have them. Finally, what I do is put the directions for how to use all the ingredients that are in the bag to prepare this particular soup. And again, this is the same format that I will follow in all of the various recipes that I make for meals in bags. Ingredients in the bag, ingredients you may need on hand, and then either optional ingredients from the refrigerator or needed ingredients from the refrigerator, and then the directions. Now, don't forget to head over to my website, marysnest.com, and download all of the recipes that you can print out, no email required, to attach to your meals in bags. And then be sure to watch these videos over here. It's a full playlist of very easy and simple meals to make that are nutritious and delicious, and I know you'll love them. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.